and we will open the meeting at 6.30 p.m. At this time, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Texas state flag. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, we'll do invocation. Uh, Mr. Sean Katinga will be providing invocation this evening. Let's pray together. Holy Father, God Almighty, we thank you for tonight. We thank you that you, in your mercy, have brought us together in this place to, to work on and to consider and to plan for what is good for the children of Little Elm. Father, you have chosen these men and these women to lead our district, and we are thankful for their service and for what they do for, for us as teachers, for us as students here in Little Elm, and we pray tonight your blessing on them. And we ask, Father, that you tonight would fill them with wisdom, uh, that they would set aside their own agendas, and that they would think of what is, um, what is going to help our children um, be the kind of people that we all desire for them to be productive citizens of this community, of this country. We want to build a nation that is strong, a, na a nation of thinkers, a nation of young people that are full of character and that um, put the interest of others before their own. And so, Father, we humble our hearts before you because we know that uh, you are the giver of all good gifts. And so we just pray that you would be present here and that you would bless everything that will be done. May it be done to your glory. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Katinga. At this time, we'll do introduction and roll call. Ms. Padilla? Mr. Daniel Gallagher? Present. Blackwood. Dan. President Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Your model name. Deanna Arnie. Here. Mr. David Montemayor. Here. Ms. Melissa Meyer. Here. Mr. Jason Olson. Here. Mr. Alejandro Flores. Here. And at present, Mr. Delion English. Thank you, Ms. Padilla. This time we'll do approval of minutes. I need a motion to approve both the September 18th regular board meeting and the special meeting on October 9th. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion on the meeting minutes? All right, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. At this time, we'll move into Superintendent Spotlight. Mr. Gallagher? Yes, thank you, President Myers. Uh, board members, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, our principal, wonderful principal of Little Elm High School, Ms. Renee Pentecost, up to the podium uh, to honor some of our awesome students. Thank you, President Myers, Mr. Gallagher, board. I appreciate your um, inviting us again. First of all, I want to introduce our students of the month for October. Um, if Lauren Burton and uh, Josh Beliga, I don't think Josh is going to make it. He is competing in uh, tennis team playoffs this afternoon. But Lauren is here. Come on up. Um, 
This is Lauren Burton. Her parents are here. Would y'all stand, please, so we can recognize you as well. Um, Lauren is one of our senior volleyball players. She also is an AP student and um, has some pretty ambitious goals. She's already been accepted into OSU and will be attending there this next fall to study business management. She wants to own her own company one day, um, something probably in the fitness industry. Um, she is uh, completing her um, uh, graduation plan on the foundation plan with a STEM endorsement currently at Little Elm High School and has already earned six hours towards college credit through uh, both AP tests and uh, she's also taken some other college level courses while at Little Elm High School. Um, she uh, teaches swimming lessons in the summer and enjoys business classes classes at the high school, and this is Miss Lauren Burton. As I said, our other student of the month was unable to be with us this evening, but he also is a senior, Josh Baliga. He also uh, plans on studying business um, when he goes to college, and his college of choice is Dallas Baptist University, where he will study marketing. He currently is uh, on our varsity tennis team. He is um, on our National Honor Society and is currently running for president in that organization, is a a participate, participating member in DECA, also an AP and on-ramp student. Um, one of the things he wanted me to share with you about his time in LE, both at the high school and in the district, he's gone uh, K through 12 in uh, LEISD. He said he has always felt welcomed and has been taught many life lessons, such as responsibility and how to take initiative. So uh, Mr. Josh Baliga is one one of our great students, and I'm sorry you didn't get to meet him tonight, but maybe we can invite him back next time. Tonight is the spotlight on the high school. I hope that you got an opportunity to see all of the clips that uh, CBS 11 came out and did on Friday, uh, highlighting all of our programming at the high school. Um, each year, this is my fourth year to get to present to y'all, and our first year we did a school-wide um, video that our media tech uh, department um, produced. Uh, the second year we did a pep rally that uh, incorporated a lot of our spirit groups. Last year, we invited our academic decathlon team uh, to present to you guys. And tonight, um, I have a fine arts presentation for you. So without further ado, I'm going to take my seat and let you enjoy. to the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. I'd like to take a moment to ask you to please turn off cell phones and other distracting devices and put away cameras. Um, we cannot have pictures of the bee. Ma'am, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, it seems there are a few spellers who haven't checked in, so if I call your name, please come on down and take your place next to me. I'm missing Olive Ostrowski, Renee Pentecost, William Barfit, Barfi, um, Clint Miller, Chip Tolentino, Marcy Park, Liz Miller, Leap Coney Bear, and Logan Swartzen Groove in here? Swartzen Groove in here. Hey, Marcy, don't be nervous. Just do what I do. Trust me, I'm not nervous. Have you ever been to a school board meeting before? I've never been to a school before. <laughs> <laughs> So, what school do you go to? Shut up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all of the children you see on stage are here because of their extraordinary ability and love of the fine arts. 
And this year, to celebrate our amazing students at Little Elm High School, we, with the help of choir, theater, Blue Angels, and a few people who thought they were here to listen to something about the maximum exemption of class sizes, ended up realizing they needed to quickly recall everything they learned in fifth grade spelling. Our local sponsor, the Blue Angels, will be joining us for tonight's presentation. Now, please give it up for Little Home High School's very own Blue Angels. Jeez, I sure haven't seen that many heels flying around since the last time I took square dance dancing lessons. <laughs> <laughs> the Blue Angels are also offering the winner of tonight's be a date to the homecoming dance on October 14th. A price that will be discussed at a later date. <laughs> now, without further ado, let the spelling begin with Miss Park. Be hear, heard correctly around the room? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. There you go. Is it? Yes. It's on. It's green. It's on. Okay. So, I'm ready. Miss Park, your yes. word is phylactery. Phylactery. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yes. Phylactery. May I have a definition, please? Either of two small square leather boxes containing religious texts traditionally, tra traditionally worn on the left arm and head by Jewish men during morning weekday prayers. Thank you. And a sentence, please? Billy, put down that phylactery. We're Episcopalian. <laughs> phylactery. P-H-Y-L-A-C-T-E-R-Y. Phylactery. That is correct. Yes. Mr. Tolentino. You were a... Last year's nationals, you remember me? Sorry, I only remember the top 10. <laughs> Slam dunk by Park. Omphiloskepsis. Omphiloskepsis. <laughs> O-M-P-H-A-L-O-S-K-E-P S-I-S, Ophiloskepsis. That is correct. <laughs> Renee Pentecost. <laughs> Your word is cow. Are you sure that's right? C-O-W. That is correct. <laughs> she must have had to grow up on a farm to know the answer to that one. <sighs> Clint Miller. <laughs> Your word is bored. <laughs> Say it again. Your word is bored. Bored? Yes, please spell the word. B O R E D. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. We're looking for B O A R D. Looks like someone's not excited for this meeting. 
<laughs> Ms. Ostrovsky. Ms. Ostrovsky's mother is currently in India on a nine month spiritual quest. <laughs> Your word is Hollux. Hollux? Yes. Hollux. H A L L U X. Hollux. That is correct. Mr. Barfy. Barfy! <laughs> Please spell palaver. <laughs> of course. One moment, please. P A L A V E R palaver. That is correct. I know. <laughs> Mr. Coney Bear. A coochie. A what? <laughs> Listen to the whole word this time, please. Okay. For all of us. Mm -hmm. A coochie. Add a spelling bee? <laughs> what does it mean? A South American rodent of the myoprocta genus resembling an agouti. Agouti. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, I've never heard this word before, and I really don't know how to spell it, so. <laughs> Would you like to forfeit your turn? <sighs> hmm. Mr. Coney Bear. Please spell the word. Coney Bear. Oh, oh, sorry. Maybe. I forgot the word. <laughs> Seriously? A coochie. Oh, right, the rodent that resembles the agouti thing. Oh, A C O U C H I. A coochie. <laughs> that is correct. Yes! Um, Mr. Coney Bear sure sailed in the clouds with this one in more ways than one. Miss Schwartz and Grubenair. Go. Your word is cystitis. Cystitis? I think I spelled that word with one of my dads. We need a spelling, please, Logan. Cystitis. S Y S T I T U S. Cystitis. I'm sorry, but that is incorrect. My dads are going to be so mad. You're lucky your parents are in India. Only my mom is. Liz Miller. Your word is chimerical. <laughs> Repeat the word. What's the word? Chimerical. <laughs> but only the speller at the microphone is allowed to speak. <laughs> oh, you know, chimerical, unreal, visionary, imaginary, highly unrealistic, extremely fantastic. <laughs>
Miracle, C H I M E R I C A L. Highly unrealistic, wildly fanciful. That is correct. But it wasn't your turn. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's your word. Can you repeat the word? No, please spell the word. C H U. Am I R C L E? I'm sorry, that is incorrect. And that is all the time we have for tonight's Coach of the Bee. I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Blue Angels, again, for keeping our spirits high during these life and death spelling moments. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to see more about what happens to these eager spellers, then please join us at Little Elm High School in December for the full version of the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. Thank you. And we're going to let you continue. I, did, I didn't forget. I just needed a, a drink real quick. We'll let you take a water <laughs> okay, break. Thank you. <laughs> I see Mr. Miller and Miss Miller looking at me out there. Sorry about that spelling bee. <laughs> T tonight, we, we are honored. Um, Board of Trustees, we, we have our administrators with us tonight. Uh, like Mr. Gallagher said, the month of October is very busy um, for um, education in the sense that we get to honor uh, another incredible group. And we know what research says about how important and what the impact a leader of a campus has. And so it goes without saying that your leadership um, is um, never ending and we appreciate your hard work and your dedication of doing what's right and what's best for our kids of Little Elm ISD. And so I would just love it at this time if we would stand and give them a round of applause to all of our principals and assistant principals that we have here in the district. And because they make such an impact, I would like to read the starfish story in case you have not heard this. And so if you will join me as I read the story. A young girl was walking alongside of a beach upon which thousands of starfish had been washed up during a terrible storm. When she came to each starfish, she would pick it up and throw it back into the ocean. People watched with amusement. She had been doing this for some time when a man approached her and said, little girl, why are you doing this? Look at the beach. You can't save all of these starfish. You can't begin to make a difference. The girl seemed crushed, suddenly deflated, but after a few minutes, she bent down, picked up another starfish, and hurled it as far as she could into the ocean. Then she looked up at the man and smiled and replied, well, I made a difference to that one. And so with that being said, our incredible students all over the district here at Little Elm ISD, they, all of our art students, I would say, in their art class, has created a framed starfish for each one of our principals and assistant principals. Uh, so these were made with love and made from our students. And so we're really excited about this. This is something that they can hang in their office and remember this story and remember the difference that you do make, each of you. And so we want to, on behalf of uh, the district, tell you thank you and that we honor you and um, 
we are very fortunate to work alongside of each of you. So again, thank you very much. President Myers, Mr. Gallagher, if you will, join me again. I would like to bring um, each of our administrators up to receive their starfish. And I, I, I chose this one first just because it was by itself. And so at this time, and, and principals and assistant principals, if, if you'll stay up here, uh, there's quite a few of you. So if you just make room and we'll take a nice picture at the end. So first up, Bill Bush. All right. From Presswick, Christy Gibson. Marty Richardson. And Felipe Vargas. All of them have names on the back, so it's kind of confusing me for a second. And it's pretty awesome, too, because each one has a different frame as well as a different uh, painting in it. So it's really, I think, a great idea. So I think you'll cherish these. From Lakeside Middle School, Clint Miller. Marcia Torres. And Marina Matas de Garcia. I have to slow down just for a second to say your name, Marina. I try. From Chavez Elementary, Doug Sevier. And Melissa Coda. This is from the high school, biggest stack. We have Renee Pentecost. Alan P. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Terilyn Monday. Kyle Heller. Ruben Molinar and Chris Reza. This is PAL, sixth grade center. We have Liz Miller and Meg Tillman. <laughs> Hackberry Elementary, Stephen Richardson and Jill Whitehead. Brent Elementary, we have Miss Virginia Gwynn. And Michael Bruno. Thank you. We have Lakeview Elementary, and I will say that Miss Carr um, and Miss Chestnut are at Camp Jolt with our fifth graders, and so we will make sure that we pass their nice pictures along to them. And we knew they couldn't be here, and we have. We have um, Oak Point Elementary. We have De <laughs> They were hiding. <laughs> we 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 have yeah. We have Debbie Clark and Audra Vandiver. Oh, look at that! It's awesome, isn't it? I love that. Some of them are. There's Audras. We were just keeping you two on your toes. Yeah, 
I forgot. I forgot they have a proclamation. And administrators, I'm sorry, but I left out, we have the proclamation uh, for Governor Abbott. I have those uh, in a nice folder as well. Mr. Roberts, I just wanted to take a minute also to thank, personally thank um, on behalf of the board, the work that y'all do, our HR team, the work that you do. Um, there's so, we can't really put into words and obviously the picture is a nice token. There's a great meaning behind it. The certificates are nice, but truly the work you guys do on a daily basis, it starts with HR, um, but it continues with the support that you provide our teachers on a daily basis. You know, we, we've got leaders here. We're fortunate to have the leaders that we have uh, moving forward in the district and just wanted to say thank you for everything you guys do. And I know um, I've never worked in HR and I um, know the work you guys do. I work with you on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but as a principal, I know the work you do on a day-to-day -day basis and um, just can't thank you enough for what you guys do. Still, still my show. So I want to spend just a couple of minutes uh, on our uh, calendar options. And I'll, I'll give you kind of uh, the rundown of, of where we are uh, with this process. On October 4th, we met with our DEIC, the District Education Improvement Council, and we had four options. Uh, we, we provided those four options to um, our District Education Improvement Council, and uh, that council is made up of uh, teachers, made up of paraprofessionals, it's made up of parents, it's made up of business owners. We had um, well above, I think, 20 plus participants where we went into kind of some in-depth discussion looking at all four options. This is what they voted on unanimously, and they came up to the forefront with calendar A and calendar B. You have both of these calendars in your board book as well as the nice side-by-side -side talking points on calendar A and calendar B, and those compare uh, each calendar. Also, under cover, I placed at each one of your uh, spaces hard copies of both of those calendars in color as well as the talking points. Our timeline is to present these tonight just for discussion. And then after tonight, we will place these two calendars out in a survey to the community and receive input and basically compile that input, which will narrow this down to one calendar. And then in the November school board meeting, we will bring that one calendar to have action on at that time. Okay, so then I would like to move us to the talking points. I think that's the easiest way to compare the two calendars. I will start by saying that we have worked very closely. We align ourselves with um, the district to our, to our west. Uh, that is all, and I know you are aware of that and you've heard that multiple times. That all surrounds itself because of uh, our partnership with NCTC. And so we've been in close conversation with them. Uh, a lot of our employees, um, you know, live in that direction as well, so on and so forth. And so all that's been vetted um, and put in all four of the options. But then again, the DEIC came back with two, just so you remember uh, what that's aligned with. Uh, you can see the talking points. Um, there are not um, a lot of differences from the calendar that we are on now. 
you can see within the two options, there are not a lot of differences within the two options. I will point out that through this document, you will see the dates that are in red. Those are where the differences lie. So first of all, I'll take you to October, and that is one of our cornerstones, our, uh, is the work that we're doing with professional learning communities. We're committed to that, and we are committed not only to the benefits of our teachers, but also the benefits of our community and things with our E3 conference, and that will remain in October. It will move to October 4th and 5th, uh, that's for preparation purposes, uh, things of that nature. Then you will move down. Um, you'll see that parent conferences are both on 1019. This was a, a big discussion in our DEIC committee having to do with the winter break. What you can't see are the other options that aren't here, but it has to do with um, it has to do with uh, professional development days for our staff. It was unanimous and it was discussed at great detail that teachers and even parents within our District Education Improvement Council wanted those professional development days at the end of our Christmas break. So if you look at the winter break, you will see the teacher work day is on January the 3rd in both calendars. They felt like where they were in the school year, that they were ready to go and be with family and then have those professional work days when they came back from that Christmas break. And so we actually had some in-depth discussions and actually had them explain why they felt that way. And that is one of the things that led them to choose option A and B. First day of second semester are both the same, January 7th. You can see spring break is the same. In calendar A, Good Friday holiday is, is a holiday. That's why it's red there and yes for April 19th. The difference in calendar B is that Good Friday holiday is not, um, it, is, it is a bad weather day. So if we do not have our bad, bad weather, uh, and so then that would be a holiday, but it's listed on that calendar. Option B is not, you know, a holiday. It's listed as a bad weather day. So that's a difference. And you can see there's a little difference in the bad weather days. Calendar A is April 22 and May 23rd, as opposed to calendar B, which is April 19th and April 22nd. Last day of school is there in front of you. And then as far as our minutes are concerned, we are conservative and we have, I think, up to four days in reserve in case of some bad weather. So at this time, if there's any questions, um, I think this is a great document to go back to. It kind of compares side by side. Up here on the slide I have for the, for the uh, audience to kind of see the color color-coded uh, calendars as well. And again, we'll put this on survey and have this go out to everybody uh, for input. Any questions from the board? The only question I have is um, on the bad weather schedule on schedule. Bad weather schedule on schedule A. Uh -huh. So if we do not use the 23rd, would the last day of school on the work day for the teachers be the 23rd or the 24th? Um, on, on calendar A. On calendar A. So let's say we don't have a bad, any bad weather. Uh-huh. Um, in May 23rd, we didn't have to use it as a bad weather day. For staff, would that the 23rd or the 24th be their last official day? Um, I think it would be if... If, the, if there's not a bad weather day, it'd be the 23rd. Okay, so y'all would Yeah, but what, what, what I'll do is because of that question, I'll make sure that that's clarified when we put that survey out. Yeah, that's the only, that's only question. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I think we do, we'll, we'll double check that because remember teachers are still on the, the, the daily, the, the students are on the minutes, uh -huh. the 75,000 seats are on the minutes, the teachers are on the 187, so that's a question we'll have to look at. We'll clarify. Yeah. 
Uh, j just one comment. You're not accepting any additional versions of this, correct? That is correct, because of our District Education Improvement Council voted I, I on I think this. when it goes out to the community, it needs to be clear that it's okay. you choose A or B. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you're going to have another 350 versions of it. Uh -huh. right? Oh, that, well, let's change this and let's right. change that. You're only selecting from A and B. Thank you for that input. We'll, we'll definitely clarify that. I, I did have a question in the... Um, for the, at the beginning of the year, we have the four-day weekend. We have a Monday and Tuesday off. Mm -hmm. Someone asked me one time, why do we, because we have that this year as well. One of them I know is because of the two-day conference, so we got to keep those days together. Uh -huh. But versus having a Friday-Monday off versus a Monday-Tuesday off, was there a big discussion on that, or was like, no. what was the driver for that? Uh, the driver was the input that we received uh, from this past year about that mid midweek start. Um, and a, a lot of the teachers uh, like that, and so it came from the um, it came from the, the start time starting in um, on August the sixth when the teachers have to come back, and then it was just the the feedback that we got from that midweek start. I understand that, but I just mean, for example, we have September third and fourth would be off. Why not? And this is just more on clarification. Why not like August thirty first to Friday? And then the Monday, the holiday, and then oh, Tuesday. Oh, I see. I'm a, sorry. I, I was talking just, about some other days. Someone made the comment that when they hear four-day weekend, uh -huh. they always assume Friday, right. Monday, uh -huh. not m Monday, Tuesday. Um, there, there wasn't any discussion about that. It was just when we put those those days in there for PLCs and um, things of that nature. But there's no, there wasn't any driving force behind that. Okay. There wasn't so discussion. So the teachers are still working that Tuesday, but not students. Right, but then they'd be, so here it's the students are off, but the teachers are there on the Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I was just saying the, the, the other option would be on the Friday. So it's just apparently some parents have an easier time getting a Friday off than a Tuesday off. Sure. Is where that question came from when I was mm -hmm. asked. But as far as discussions from our DIC, there was not any okay. around that. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh, you bet. I'll be back in November with the final. Thank you. All right, the last item we are postponing since Mr. Briggs is out due to a death in the family because of the reason that Mr. Briggs is out. So this is the last item we're going to be postponing until the end of the year. And then by the text, we're going to be taking action chapter 551, 1072, 551, 1074, at 742. We will come back to open session at 810, please. First up on action items, Little Elm ISD contract summary report, Mr. Anderson. Good evening, President Myers and Board of Trustees and Superintendent Gallagher. Um, you do have the contract summary report in your um, Board reports and what these this um, summary report allows the Little Elm to purchase products and support services from list of attached contracts which have been properly awarded through statutorily authorized methods. And on this for this month, we only have two contracts one is for Grace Church to actually rent our facilities at Lakeside Middle School. And the second contract is a child nutrition contract, which is for um, kitchen and equipment purchases and repair for services, and it's um, for Longhorn Mechanical. And the administration recommends approval of the Little Elm ISD contract summary report as submitted. I need a motion for the board to approve as submitted. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion or questions for Mr. Anderson? So on the long run mechanical, it's just, it's a contract for them to be the servicer of these? It, yeah, these so it's almost like a catalog bid and they'll um, purchase products and mechanical. Okay, so the actual cost will come once, yes. once they actually get some TFs. If, if we ever need any repairs. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Okay. Don't say what. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up, discuss and approve the financial reports. And these are August financial reports. And um, 
we're between fiscal year and a new budget year. And um, so our August 31st, 2016 fiscal year will be presented in December um, with our audit. And the major budget amendment I have in this, these financials is $2,715,000 budget transfer from the general operating fund balance in 2016-17 to capital projects for the construction of the transportation operations facility. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on when we look at the capital projects. And the budget amendments included include all amendments through October 2017. And just we're going through these slides and we are working in two different fiscal years a little bit. This is the fund balance analysis. Um, as you can see, our last audit was completed in 2015-16. We had a $27, $27 million fund balance. Our budget for 2016-17 currently is at a $2.3 million deficit. And again, this will stay our on um, this will remain a budget item until the audit is completed and we'll get our actual numbers. And then the 2017-18 budget that you have approved, um, we had $24,673,000 um, fund balance. And our proposed 2017-18 budget amendments were included in your board report, which you'll uh, approve tonight is $24,673,000 with no change in our fund balance. And again, this is for 2017-18. And I don't wanna confuse it, but now we're gonna go back to 2016-17 um, because I'm, you know, I didn't mention that we're gonna move $2.7 million out of our fund balance. So I just wanna show you that after the um, transfer out of our fund balance, I'm still, I'm gonna, forecast a positive or a surplus in 2016-17. Again, our audit, $27 million. We had 2016-17 budget, we have $2.3 million deficit. And in 2016-17, I'm forecasting about $27.1 million fund balance, which will you know, estimate about $100,000 surplus. And this is after moving out the $2.7 million transfer from the general operating fund for to a capital projects fund for the transportation and operations facility. <clears throat> now this is for our 2017-18 budget that you're um, I think getting used to seeing every month. Our initial budget estimated revenue is $66.5 million. Our proposed amendments, $23 million for this month and we have 66 million six hundred twelve thousand dollar estimated revenue and again these are the functions that are um, allocated at the campus level and we budget still at 77 percent of our budget appropriated at the campus level mr anderson yes for the amendments do you mean twenty three thousand or twenty three million twenty three thousand okay and uh, our total appropriations Initial budget was $66.5 million. And again, we're at about $66,606,000 in our amended budget. And um, there's no change in our budgeted fund balance. <clears throat> and this is our general fund cash flow for August um, prior to our audit. Our beginning cash, about $50.2 million. We um, spent $3.2 million down on our cash and our balance is about $46.9 million. And these are the capital projects um, that, you're, that, we ha that we have ongoing. is the high school expansion, that $21.5 million project. Year-to-day expenditures are $18.9 million. So we have about $2.5 million um, still waiting for invoices and some work to be completed at the high school. And now the transportation operation facility, this was originally um, approved by the board at $7 million. And we did decrease that at one point to $4 million so we could stand at 25.5 if you remember. And, um, but now I'm um, asking the board to approve tonight a $2.7 million transfer from our general fund 
um, to supplement this um, the, the transportation operation facility so we can get it get it built and completed. So our year-to-day expenditures are 442,000. Our project balance would be 6.2 million. And again, this would include the $2.7 million transfer if you approve that tonight. And the, so the transfer remaining would be $285,000, which we do in 2017-18. And these are the financials that are included in your board packet. And the administration recommends approval of the, 20, of the August 2017 financial reports as presented. And again, remember these are prior to our audit. All right, I need a motion to approve as submitted. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions, discussion from the board? The only question I had, and you might not be able to answer this, but with the operations facility, I know there was some question on whether we would be out or have that up in time for when we're supposed to be out of our current facility. Uh, I we believe still we're still projecting. And, um, I don't remember the month or the time. I don't know if, um, but um, we are projecting that it will be in a timely manner that it's approved by the city, you know, because okay. we have to move our buses off the property that we've sold them that was um, King, and um, so that's that's what I have. Do you need? I can come back with a specific date and time as far as our estimation. But probably right around a year. That's right what I figured. Month. Yeah, right I think there were just some questions on you know if we would be able to still meet that timeline. So if you can, just let us know. Yeah, so we will still um, in there. Yeah, Rod, I believe is going to bring a package, at least a site package, to the board. Um, either next month or December. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? All right, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Next up, consent agenda. Uh, I just need a motion to approve as is. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions, discussion? All right, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, comments for tonight. The only one I had is just a reminder for the board, the workshop that's coming up next Monday. Um, let me look real quick. We will have an agenda out. I'm glad you reminded us. Yes. Six to, six to nine. Six to nine thirty-ish. <laughs> six to 12. That's, that's the goal. Six, six to two. TVD. <laughs> so, and you're exactly right. So if we can, if we can come together as a board um, and stay on target and on task, we're, we'll have some, we'll have four categories, four things on the agenda, and we'll have a timeline to each. So we will have to stay within that timeline. So Get that we the little things to stop people. I'll, I'll have a timer. Cut it down. Okay. <laughs> that will say quit talking. <laughs> um, so the, the agenda items, just for everybody's knowledge, update on one-to-one -one devices, um, energy policy plan development update, overview of educational services and plan for STEM, and then the board discussion, which is facilities naming process, board operating procedures, and student advisory role. So for categories that are targeted for you, Mr. Blackwood, I'm just gonna pinpoint you, if you can make sure that you have any necessary collateral yep. available and sent out prior, that would be great. Um, I'm gonna give everybody a little bit of homework on the board operating procedures. Please go through the old version, which is very lengthy, and the new version. And then come back with what you don't like, what you do like, what we need to keep, what we should get rid of. I know it's a lot to ask of everybody, but it will make the evening go much quicker so we don't stay on one portion for too long. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know it because I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably forgotten. Oh, You've no. Slept no since I, I then. still, believe me, I, I still know yeah. a lot of it. I wish I could forget it. <laughs> um, and then, let's see. I think those were my only comments tonight, so I will open it up to the board for comments. Mr. Flores? No comments. No comments? Perfect. Mr. Olson? Second time only. No comments. Wow. <laughs> this is a first. Okay. 
Well, second. I guess. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Montemayor? Uh, no comment. Okay. Ms. Harding? Uh, I was just going to say I had fun tonight. Thank you. And that's it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Blackwood? Uh, I do have one very short comment. Um, and it's mainly just for all the ad administration and the board. I know everyone's pretty much aware of it. Uh, we've been pretty, pretty much beating it to death. But uh, our band is, for the first time ever, Sorry, I apologize. Our band for the first time ever is hosting the UIL Marching Contest uh, region this Saturday. And, and kind of unprecedented for UIL, we're actually hosting the area the very next weekend. Uh, we definitely want to try and as a district and a school and as a band group put, uh, put our best foot, uh, foot forward. They're not going to let me talk. That's how we're going to do that. So, uh, But uh, I know that we uh, would very much appreciate any and all uh, support or if anyone wants to come out and watch and you know participate. Uh, we are in going to be in desperate need of volunteers. So if any of y'all want to come out and help park cars or help park buses, that would be wonderful. <laughs> uh, these are actually going to be our second and third marching contest we host in a four-week period. So we're kind of beating our parents up and, and taking advantage of them right now. So uh, anyone that knows of any groups, organizations, anything like that, that would like to help or that could use community service hours, please send them our way, and we will be more than happy to sign off on any hours that they want. Did you say NJHS? We've contacted okay, uh, NHS. Uh, we've got Coach Hal working with us also trying to get as many organizations. I've actually reached out to NHS to Colony, Lake Dallas, Braswell, Wakeland, and Lone Star also. So, perfect. thank you very much. Absolutely. Mr. Gallagher? Yeah, just a very, very short comment. Um, I want to first thank uh, Ms. Pentecost for uh, all the work that she's doing. And uh, what we saw tonight was um, just a sample of the great things that are happening at the high school, uh, but really across the district. And, and again, thank you to her work uh, this past week. It's been a very busy week there with um, uh, CBS 11 when they came out for the, the pep rally. Um, it was um, it was really nice to see our kids and the programs that they participate in, to see that showcased uh, and the comments. What we heard from uh, some of the and I'll use the term producers, the the people that were working on the um, behind the scenes with CBS 11. One of them actually said, "Is there anything that this this school does not do for the kids?" So it's it's pretty impressive when people are starting to recognize the great things that are happening uh, here in Little Elmi. ISD, and um, I'm just very proud of, of what we offer. And again, tonight was a great example. And also, just um, thank you to the principals for coming out tonight. Um, we, we, we really do enjoy honoring them and um, thanking them for their service, and also our human resources team for their work for the district. Perfect. And I will say good luck to the girls' volleyball for tomorrow night. They have to win for to be in districts. So I think it's McKinney North, and it's there. Yes. So if you can go out, go. Um, go ahead. Oh, it's too late. No, you already said no comments. <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Olson. Oh, the bond meeting, Lakeside. Okay. 6.30 to 6.30? To be determined. Till whenever. All right, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion carries, we'll adjourn at 825. Ah!